Hey Cornerstone Church Choice Cities, Pastor Adriani here. Thank you guys so much for logging in today and being a part of our online experience. You guys have chosen a really great place to be today. Listen, we wanna take a couple seconds and say thank you to all of you. You guys have been so awesome and so great about coming online week after week and liking and commenting and sharing. And we wanna encourage you guys to please continue to do so. So with that, if you guys can shift your focus to the bottom of your screen, you're gonna see that share button hit that share button. What's gonna happen is it's gonna give you an option to just share or start a watch party. We would love if you guys started a watch party because if you do that, all of your friends and your family who are online today, they'll be able to participate and worship with us together. And as always, be sure that you leave a comment let us know where you're watching from. We have leaders and pastors on standby who are ready to say hi to you, to bless you, to pray with you, and leave us a smiley face or a little heart. Let us know that you're here. So with that, take a minute, gather your family, get a cup of coffee, get comfortable, and let's enjoy this worship experience together. We love you guys. We cannot wait to see you. God bless.
Everybody. Hey, it's Pastors Wednesday. Joey and Meredith Zamora. Yep. We have the privilege of pastoring one of the greatest churches in Washington <laughs> State called Cornerstone Church here in the Tri Cities area. Yes. Um, but anyway, um, gather your families. It is our midweek, huh, it Meredith? Is. Greet it is the people. Wednesday. It is Wednesday, and it is May 20th, mm -hmm. and it is your dad's birthday. It is dad's birthday. It He's is. 70. And I think it's Aaron Gonzalez's five. birthday. That right? Yeah, but Aaron ain't 75. <laughs> no. Happy birthday, Aaron Gonzalez, yes. but happy birthday to Jose Zamora, 75 years old. Absolutely. What a man. He looks like he's 65. He's taken some <laughs> some punishment over the years, but he looks good he still. He looks good. Look good, Dad. Happy birthday yep. from we Meredith and I. Happy birthday and happy birthday to all the May birthdays and happy anniversary for everybody Absolutely. that's survived their quarantine anniversaries and birthdays. I'm just glad our 30th didn't end up there. We still have a year to go before that. We're going to be 29 next, two more two more months, yeah. 29. But can you imagine if you had a milestone anniversary and you end up spending it I think home? I'd be rebellious. I think I'd just There's take you. There's nothing open. I'd take you to Lowe's. Well, there we go. Take you, <laughs> I'd take you to Lowe's. To me. <laughs> Maybe Walmart. Oh we go to Lowe's and then we hop over to Walmart. Hey, Target might just make it work. So if you can <laughs> buy you a watermelon, there, we'll be good. Buy you a cantaloupe, a strawberry. We'll dip chocolate right. in it. You're anyway, not. we're just messing. We're just having fun. Nevertheless, Absolutely. listen, it's our midweek service. It's it, it's our time. I don't know about you, but hopefully you've been enjoying this new series on yeah. a wealthy place, Psalm sixty six. Uh, verses 8 through 12, really, you know, God brings us through the fire. He brings us through the water. Um, he's laid affliction on us, but he brings us through. I mean, no, yeah. we, he's brought us through some hellacious times and some things that would overwhelm us and overcome yeah. us. But uh, then he, the Bible goes on to say that he brings us into a wealthy, wealthy place. place. And I begin to talk to you a little bit on Wednesday or Sunday uh, morning that um, the word wealthy place there, I, I likened up to Isaiah um, what was that? Isaiah 55, I believe, and uh, where it yeah. says, as the rain comes down and the snow and it water it, it waters the earth. You know, the word waters the earth or saturates the earth. There is it's the word for wealthy place. Right. It's the divine, the root word for that. And so um, I liken that, that, you know, he, he waters the earth so that it brings forth um, its fruit. And so it gives seed to the sower, bread to the eater. And then it goes on, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. Mm -hmm. So he likens the word of God coming out of his mouth as a wealthy place, as the rain falls down yeah. and the snow comes down and, and it watereth. It, bring, it, it brings a wealthy, it, yeah. it turns anything that is desolate or dry, anything that is not, anything that, 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 that is just... It affects everything it touches. It does. It, and so yeah. any, it, it just saturates it, it inundates it, um, it fills it, to overflow and it bring, it bring anything that's overflowing, yeah. anything that is saturated or inundated, inundated, it's considered a wealthy place. The yeah. Hebrew word there, and so um, I begin to talk to you guys a little bit about um, you know the uh, Saul and, and and his daddy's donkeys and all of that. I'm not gonna get into that, but but talk about overflow because I mean, you know that God has promised the children of Israel. In fact, I'm gonna get into Numbers 13 in just a minute, but Numbers 13. Um, God has promised his people yeah. a land that flows with milk and honey, a yeah. land that flows. The, actually, that the word flows there in, 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 the, in the Strong's Concordance renders that overflow. Mm -hmm. so, so God is wanting to give his people a land that overflows with milk and honey. Yeah. And I don't know about you, Meredith, but it's time. It's a time and a season, even during this crisis crazy pandemic. I mean, sure. I said it last week, I'll say it again, um, that this pandemic came to bring a root awakening, but the root awakening is going to bring a great yeah. awakening. The church will Absolutely. arise in this hour, and we're going to see, I believe, the church come and see some of its greatest days, and we're going to see God bring restoration. God's going to bring reconciliation. God's going to bring restitution to the things that have been lost, to the things that have been damaged, the things that have been destroyed. Sure. And we're going to see that, whether that is in family and marriages and children and businesses. Yeah. Um, I know everybody's money seems like it's doing gymnastics, but in the midst of it, thank God we don't believe 
and the economy of no. the world. We believe in the economy of the kingdom of God that whatsoever man sows, come on, that he shall also reap. God cannot be mocked. I said God cannot be mocked that whatsoever a man or woman or child sows, that's yeah. what he reaps. But anyway, um, say something, Meredith. I just want to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I want to talk about overflow again. I want to talk a little bit about overflow here in just a minute. Sure. I just, I think it's such a good place to be in. Um, I've got something for Sunday I'm really excited about too in the same, same series and the same thought process, but it really is the, this ability that regardless of where we're at mm -hmm. and regardless of what we're going through, that God has given us the ability to prosper, that, mm -hmm. that nothing that happens to us is permanent, nothing keeps us mm -hmm. in that place forever. But seasons are just that. They're seasons. Mm -hmm. We are meant to go through them. We're meant to come through them. We're meant to, to it, you know, this too shall pass mm -hmm. is kind of that thought. And mm -hmm. when it does, it's not that God is a God that always takes us from one level to another level to another level to another level. It's not that God ever wants us to regress because he never regresses. Mm -hmm. He never stops growing. He never gets smaller. He never gets less than he never. God is always mm -hmm. ever increasing. And so if that is the plan for us, mm -hmm. regardless of the fires, regardless of the waters, regardless of yeah. the stuff we go through, because we all go through stuff. Here's the real, real part of life that we all go through stuff. We all yeah. have bad days. We all have bad seasons. We've all had a bad time. We've all had bad circumstances. We've all had unfair and un mm -hmm. things that we did not deserve come our way. And so here's the, the mind shift or the change that has mm -hmm. to happen is that God will take us through those things, not so that we stay in those things, but God takes us through so that we can come out to the other side and then eventually help somebody else get through the stuff they've got to go through. It, it builds your faith. It does. It and, builds your faith. And, and and faith is not faith unless it's exercised. Faith is not faith unless it's built Tested. upon. Faith is not faith unless it is used. Mm -hmm. And so here's the great thing. We're living in a day and a time where the world is in chaos. People are yeah. afraid. There is all sorts of news and news things that are mm -hmm. happening. And they're waiting on governor's addresses. And we wait on all those kind of things. But here's the bottom line. Faith is still faith. I believe in being saved. I believe in doing the things just like you should eat right. You should take yeah. care of your body. You should do all that. But the other thing is either you are going to be controlled by the fear that is spread around us or something in you has to arise and say, you know what? Mm -hmm. God has not given me a spirit of fear. Right, Therefore, right. I can walk through some bad situations. I can walk through hard stuff. I can walk through this. And yeah. because favor is on me and because the blessing of God is right. on me and because his goodness is on me, I'm I'm not staying in this place or in this season or in this situation, but God has sent me there to make a difference yeah, yeah, in yeah. wherever I'm it's at. It's almost like a mind shift has sure. to take place. Um, so often, if you don't know, I mean, there's a progression. If you still have a slave mentality, the children of Israel came out of Egypt. For sure. 430 years, they were, bond, they were bound to the sure. Egyptian sure. Uh, taskmasters, and, and, and they constantly were beat down telling them what they were not. And there's so many people in the kingdom of God that have been liberated as sons of the living God, but yet they still have a, they battle with a slave mentality. Sure. And Explain that a little bit so people well, don't m misunderstand the, the slave that. The, the, it, it's the, obviously we have an old nature um, and a new nature, the new nature yeah. that is created in Christ Jesus you know, um, it's what you find the anointing. That's where you find the good. Uh, a lot of times is the old nature always will revert back to the past and the past always will disqualify you. Sure. And it tells you what you're not. And a lot of times we come into church or we come into religion and religion tells you really, um, it's really a law based performance based religion it tells you what you can't do or sure. you can do what you say, can't say or can't say. Um, and, and pretty soon when you, you get bound into that and you think that is God, you know, God, God's found, I've always said this He's found on the corner of spirit and truth. God loves spirit and truth. Yeah. God is a God of truth, uh -huh, but he's also spirit. God is spirit. And so if you're going to worship him, you have to do it in spirit and in truth. There's a way to do that. God loves a contrite heart. So regardless of your past has held you back, 
you know, you, you can't, it, it's a, there has to be a shift in mentality. Yeah. There has to be a renewing of the mind. Romans chapter 12 talks about, you know, not to be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may know what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Yeah. And so, so we have to understand that. But that's basically, we have to renew the mind. Sure. And that's what you see. The Old Testament, I've taught you this for years, that the Old Testament was a foreshadowing of things that were to come. Mm -hmm. It speaks of Christ. And so, so really, the, the Old Testament is the New Testament is, that is concealed. Mm -hmm. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Mm -hmm. So everything in the Old Testament, when we read, is a picture of not only Jesus, but Jesus and his body or Jesus and his church. Right, right. And so we need to understand that even as Israel had to come out for 430 years, they were bound mm -hmm. in, in Egyptian bondage. God had a Moses. God yeah. always has had a man. Yeah. God has always has had a woman. God has always had a person, come on, that was anointed and appointed to bring deliverance to what he's needed. And so he's, you know, there you got Moses, a deliverer, <laughs> come on, and, and he's delivering the people up out of their bondage, yeah. and he brings them into a wilderness. And, and he, it gets tested. I mean, there's a testing. If you've been 430 years, there's a mentality that comes with that. This is sure. how we do it. This is how we eat. The, 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 even the diet in Egypt was garlic and cucumbers and onions, which any dietitian would tell you produces gas. Now, I'm not going to go there, <laughs> but, but there's a new diet that God is wanting to have. And, you know, they begin to, you know, they begin to get free. We know that God said, take a lamb for a house. Mm -hmm and ply the blood over the house because there's a death angel is going to come. The last plague is going to remove the firstborn and yeah. it goes through the, through the plagues. The plagues to me are pretty much um, contractions, like a woman in travail, a woman who has babies goes through different contractions to bring about this baby. The womb of Egypt had Israel in its infancy, and now it's time to deliver, and Moses was the midwife. Moses was the midwife that was going to bring deliverance to a nation. Yeah. And so it had to be birthed in the womb of Egypt. And so now, now Moses takes the people up out into a wilderness, and the people start murmuring. They start complaining. They start, you know, he had it better in Egypt, and it was better. You know, I want my cucumbers and leeks and garlic. I want, you know. Yeah. And, and pretty soon, they, you know, we don't got no water. You know, the water is here is dirty, so Moses has to find a tree. Mm -hmm. Gets a tree, puts it in the water, makes the waters that were bitter sweet. Now they can drink. Then, they, you know, I'm tired. Of God gives manna in the wilderness, gives bread. Every morning you go pick up, come on, an sure. omer uh, 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 for family. Go, go, pick up, go pick up some bread. Every morning there was, there was bread God delivered. What is it? I don't know. It's just bread. It looks like, I don't know what is it. It's just what it is. What is it? And what so they picked needed. it up, picked it up on the journey, and Moses, and they still murmured. They, 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 they wanted meat. They wanted quail. And so God says, you want meat? I'm going to give you meat. <laughs> and so God says, I'm going to give you quail, man. You're going to have all the quail that's coming out of your ears and nose. It's gonna be, you know, you're going to have it. And so it was never enough. It was like it was never enough, and God was getting frustrated with them at times. But but yeah. but Moses would always remind God of his of his mercy, and God would always remind him of of the word. And so um, that's what that's why this uh, tonight is so important is is that the wealthy place that God is bringing us into is a promised land. Um, the promised land is full of promises. Um, over eight thousand promises that I have told you guys that are in the Bible that you have to discover and recover those promises so that, you know, you can benefit from that. All of God's promises are never a no and always a yes. And I don't know about you, but that's good news. But sure. we're going to have to have a mind shift, Meredith. Yeah. There has to be a transformation in the mind, in the mind sure. of man or in the man, mind of a woman, in the mind of a child, so that we can begin to um, get a transaction Mm -hmm. of, of and benefit from um, the renewing of that mind. Absolutely. I, I think this 
to me, here, here's a great example of it. Um, the difference between the mentality of the, of the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt versus the mentality of Moses, mm -hmm. who Moses was raised as an Egyptian, but wasn't, right. didn't have the, but still had the influence of his mother in the early years, still had the influence. Yeah, he was raised there was in something different Pharaoh's about palace. It. Yeah. So he had the best so, teachers. So he, did, he didn't grow up as a servant or as a slave. He grew up as a leader and as a ruler. He grew up and as there's a prince a whole, and a king. Yeah. There's a whole different mentality that comes with that. And so here he brings them out. And, and here's the beautiful thing. When they get to the part where, where the water is bad and they have to throw, throw the, the stick in it, throw the, the wood in it, and all the rest of it, but they want him to fix it. They want Moses do something. Yeah. Moses do because they've spent 430 years now just doing what people have told them to do and waiting for somebody right. else to fix the right. situations. Right. Where here is part of the beauty of what happens by the time Joshua mm -hmm. gets them into the promised land. I might be jumping ahead on you. Way but, ahead, but, but, it's but, okay. but but the, the beauty of it is they are now participants in what is happening on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the mind shift comes from somebody do it for me, somebody get me to heaven, somebody get me, m help me be saved, somebody teach me, somebody pray for me in yeah. that mindset of just do it for me yeah. to now understanding that I have a participation and I have a responsibility to do my part wow. in the midst of it. Christianity is about taking what God has already given. There's nothing God is going to give to you that he hasn't already given sure. to you. The blood of Jesus, the cross, yeah. and his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, given us the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to lead us and guide us into the truths of the matter yeah. of his promises mm -hmm. so that we can obtain them and sustain them long enough yeah. to make a difference in the world that we live in. Um, God has given us a responsibility as believers to take faith. He's given every man a measure of faith. Yeah. He's given you a measure for you to say you have no faith is a lie. The Bible says he's given every man a measure of faith in the book of Romans work and it. work it. <laughs> if you got a lot of faith, work it. If you got a little faith, work it. It's a muscle. Faith is a muscle. If you work it, things begin to get bigger and stronger and, and, and it has memory to it. And it has memory. And I've said this for a long time, that faith, yeah. come on, is only accessible by the words of your mouth and the works of your hand. Yeah. By the words of your mouth and the works of your hand. So we have to learn to, like God in Isaiah 55, if we're going to come into a wealthy place, my brothers and sisters, we are going to have to articulate and be bold in our faith and begin to allow the word of God to dwell within us richly and let it bubble up out of the lips Absolutely. of clay and let it proclaim the good news of the Lord. And we will see the promises of God unfold like a flower and bring forth its brilliance and its fragrance in the place that it needs to. Mer Meredith, I'm telling you that it's a mind shift. We have to have the mind shift. Um, it takes me back to Numbers 13, and, and I want to get here because Moses, in Moses 13, you, you can find this whole dialogue. I'm going to kind of be paraphrasing, but it, it says numbers. Moses sent the, and Numbers, what did I say? Moses. Moses, I'm sorry. <laughs> numbers 13, God instructed Moses, and he said, Moses sent them out to scout out the land of Canaan and said to them, get up this way by the south um, through the Negev of desert and go up into the hill country. And he says, and see what the land is and whether the people who dwell there are strong or weak or few or many and whether the land they, are, um, they, they live in is good or bad or whether the, the cities they dwell in are camps or strongholds. Um, and what the land is, whether it is, um, it is fat or lean, whether there is timber or, or not, and be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now, the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. And so you see that they go and spy out the land for 40 days, mm -hmm. okay, which is the number of testing. Mm -hmm. So God is testing their faith. Notice Moses sends out how many spies? Twelve. Mm -hmm. Two come back with a good report. Joshua and Caleb, okay? They were men of a different spirit. Let me yeah. say, let me put it in a different vernacular. Let me put it in joy vernacular so that we, we get it. The, the, they were a different spirit is that they had a different mindset. Yeah. 
They were gonna they they were going to take the word of God at face value and believe it. Yeah. Ten of the spies said, "We're not able to take it." Can't do it. The the men are big. Yes. The, the land is great. Yes, the land is flowing and overflowing with milk and honey. Yes, the grapes are big and the cucumbers are humongous. And I'm telling you, man, the watermelons are gargantuan. Everything there is big, including the giants. They're big. And, and, and you see all that. Ten is the number of the law. The law disqualifies you. The law tells you what you can or cannot have. Yes. And it tells you what you can and cannot do. And when you have and you listen to a legalistic, performance-based religion, you never will amount. You're never good enough. And so you have to get it in your head, brothers and sisters, yeah. that you can do nothing to make God love you any more or less. you got to get it through your noggin. God loves you. Yes, that when he, you understand the power of that love, come on, he brings you into the prominent places of his wealthy places and he's wanting you to be filled and satisfied and he's wanting you to be filled to the to, to the brim to the point where you overflow and are saturated and inundated sure. with the fatness of the land and the goodness of the land yeah and so that's the promises of god he's wanting everything in abundance in fact he says I come to give life. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he says, I'm in John 10, 10 now. But he says, but I have come to give life and that much in abundance and that much more abundantly. Let me say it a different way. And that much to overflowing. Mm -hmm. I want to so saturate and inundate you with my life that my life, come on, the, my life is overflowing in your life in the realm of spirit, in the realm of soul, in the realm of body, where your body is totally radically healed and set free by the powers of this world and by the powers of, of, of what dictates, you know, th this world. Um, I'm telling you that when we can get the mind of Christ, Meredith, come on, he's given us his mind. And if we, if we have it, if we have the mind of Christ, I heard an old man, uh, old man of God Years ago, he's on pass on with the Lord, but he said, if we have it, the mind of Christ, then we have to let the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and that's so true. We have to let the mind of Christ, let this mind that was, yeah. that was in Christ Jesus, come on, Which is a be choice. in us. It is a choice, yeah. and it is a discipline more than anything. Yeah. It, you know, the, the word disciples, it comes from the root word discipline. The, the, this discipline ones, disciples, we're, we're to make disciples of all men, Come on, going to all the way. The Great Commission is to make disciples. Part of the discipleship is that you become disciplined in your mind. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm making disciples sure. right now. For those that are listening and you can hear the sound of my voice, I'm here to bring liberty to the captive. If you have a slave mentality and if you have something that is holding you back, I don't care if it's in your body, in your, in your soul, mind, will, and emotions, or your spirit. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus... Yeah. I, I, I loose you, come on, from the lie. You, have, you, you, you can't embrace the lie and take the truth. You have to let go of the lie to embrace the truth. Yeah. And some people don't realize that they have the truth, and then they go and they're searching and, and exchange the truth for the lie. And I'm telling you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in this hour, you must learn, come on, to have a mind that is renewed, and don't be so... Uh, 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 captured by what you can and cannot do. Yeah. Because if God says, if you can do it, listen, God, you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. If you don't believe that, rip that thing out of the Bible and throw it in the garbage. But I guarantee you, the Bible says we can, we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, we have to have a renewed mind. So he goes in. You you know the story. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they go in, and they um, they they the the ten come back with an evil report. The two come back with a good report. And Caleb stands up and quiets the people and said, "Hey, hey, let's go up at once. Let's yeah. go right now, and let's settle it. For we are more than able. Come yeah. on, to conquer the land, to conquer this promised place, this wealthy place." Mm -hmm. And ten says, "No, we're not able." And so they listened to the law. They listened to the, to yeah. the 10 that disqualified them. And you know what? Let me read this. This is why. 
This is what verse 33 is so significant. There, it says, there, it says, there, this is what the 10 said. There we saw the Nephilims, the giants, the sons of Anak, who come from the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. Yeah. We were in our own sight. The mentality is that we had a grasshopper mentality. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know about you, but there's, Meredith, there's something sad when you have a grasshopper mentality that when you, when God is telling you, I've given you this land that flows with milk and honey, and your own mentality says, oh, I'm only a grasshopper. The giants are too big. Yeah. The people are, yes, the fruit is good. Yes, the produce is great. Yes, the fortified cities. Yes, there is water there. Yes, the mountains and the hills are blossoming. Yes, there's green <laughs> pastures. Yes, there's everything that is great there. But, but, but we can't yeah. overcome. Why? Because we have a grasshopper mentality. And then it says, we, are, we, we said, we are in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Grasshoppers, Meredith? Locusts, locusts eat everything mm -hmm. that partakes to the tree. Mm -hmm. They eat the root of the tree, the leaf of the tree, the limbs of the tree. Yeah, and it's no wonder that Joel, it's no wonder that Joel says, you know what God's going to do? He's going to restore the years that That's the good. grasshoppers Come on, and the locusts and the flying locusts, all those are different stages of yeah. the grasshopper. But he says, I'm, I'm here to declare to you, and I'm, I'm here to prophesy to somebody. I'm telling you that Joe prophesied, and I'm prophesying and, 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 and reiterating what Joe said, that God is about to bring restoration. The years that the locusts and the grasshopper mentality, come on, has stolen from you. God is about ready to give that back. The years that the locust has eaten, God will bring restoration and, and he will bring an inundation and a saturation and bring you from low places to high places, from desolate places to wealthy places. It's a new season. And I'm telling you, it is a time to, it's time to arise. It's time to shake off the old mentalities and the, and, and the places and the old religiosities that have held us back and say, you know what, if God said I can have it, and there's 8,000 promises for me, I'm telling you, I'm going to open up my mouth, just like the rain that falls and the snow thereof, mm -hmm. come on, and waters the earth so that it brings forth its produce. Oh, and he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that proceeds out of my mouth. There's got to be a word that proceeds out of the people's mouth in this season. And you and us, we're called to be prophetic, a prophetic people don't have a muzzle over our mouth to where we do not say anything if there is ever a time to say something it is now yeah. i i so agree there's something about about the difference between the two and the ten and just for a minute if i can touch that for a second because yeah. they all saw the same thing all they of them. all were looking at the same thing they all were in the same situation the yeah. same land the same they saw the same grapes right. they saw the same stuff they saw the same giants they saw the same things right. but the mentality shift that says we can't to we can is so incredibly important and mm -hmm. i just want to say this because i'm sure there's some people watching that that there are areas in your life that you can. You believe it. You you right. you know it. You want it. You're moving forward. But then we all have places in our lives where we feel like we can't. We can't conquer this. We can't get over this. We can't win it. We can't lose the weight. We can't get in shape. We can't we can't get out of debt. We can't do certain things, and it becomes the mentality that keeps you it keeps you conquered as long as you don't think you're able to. To. And here's the thing that I think is a challenge if we were going to issue today is find an area, just one area, you don't have to go after all of them, but find one area of your life where you feel like you can't, that you are limited, that you can't get your breakthrough, that you can't accomplish 
and target that area with the promises of God. Absolutely. Until your mind shift, shifts and you realize, I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can walk this thing out. Mm -hmm. the, God is for me, so who can be against mm -hmm. me? The yes of God is on my side. Until you get that into from here into here, into your thinking, mm -hmm. into your way of life, into all the rest of it, it's one thing to know it. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to believe what you're saying. Absolutely. And so I just want to challenge you. If there is an area in your life that you are stuck on the can't, you can't get through this, you can't survive it, you can't win, that is the area I believe God is wanting to target, to bring it around and cause you to see that there are more wow. here for you than against you, Come that on. God is for you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? And if and if his word and his, his blood and the power of his Holy Spirit is on your side, then nobody can stand against you in it. this hour. And there has to be something in you that says, hey, I, love it. I have lived less than what I should have and so therefore I'm not going to be condemned yeah. but I'm going to shake it off and I'm going to take what he's given right. me and I'm going to do something with it and we are going to see the victory of God on our side. Meredith 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 I, I've preached this for a whole year last year and the year before about two years it says who also this is Paul speaking who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament we are able ministers of the New Testament. We can. Yeah. We are people who God said we can. We can do it. Yeah. We can say it. We can believe it. Yeah. We can have it. We can prophesy it. We can decree it. We have a responsibility and can pray it. Yes. Are, you, are you hearing this? Absolutely. We have got to be bold with our faith and we have to allow the word of God to come out our mouth. There has to be a good confession. Yep. Our profession has to be our confession. Yep. There is, you can call me old school. You, uh, you're a blab it, grab it kind of guy. Kind of, yes. But I'm not in it with a formula. I'm in it understanding in relationship. We have a responsibility because God has given us, come on, the responsibility of dominion to the sons of God. Okay, mm -hmm. and as long as we have we we live in an earth suit, we have dominion over the earth, and we have dominion over things, and so we can speak to things, and say to things, and it, it starts with renewing our mind. Yeah, if we can renew our mind to the Word of God and allow the Word of God uh, to to renew it and 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 replace yeah. every old thinking, do away with legalism, do away with stinking thinking. Mm -hmm. I always. I've always talked about stinking thinking. Whatever whatever you think about is what you literally will, will become. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. And so you got to be careful what you're thinking about. And, 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 and if you're thinking about prospering and you're thinking of constantly, this is why the power of your imagination is important. Yeah. Because all words have imagery to it. Sure. You know, and so I don't, that's another sermon, another hour. But the, the reality is, is we, we have to understand that that what we speak, you know, what, what's it look like? Like for you and I, what, what's it look like when I'm in the car, when I'm in the hot tub, when I'm at the house, when I'm fishing, anytime that I'm alone, a lot of times or even when we're together, a lot of times we start confessing the word of God, mm -hmm. you know. Um, with long life, Lord, will you satisfy me? I yeah. start speaking over my brain. I speak this over my heart. I speak over my yeah. kidneys and my pancreas and my spleen and my intestines and my colon and my joints and my and my arteries. And you you can you can laugh if that's what you want to laugh. I speak to it because I believe that my, my you know my mountain knows my voice. Mm -hmm. Okay, my body knows my voice, and I speak life to it. And I always will speak to it. So I always speak life to, to those main um, uh, things functions, of, my, functions yeah. of my body. I speak life to it, to my eyeballs, to my ears, to my, to my teeth, to my gums, to my tongue. I mean, and it may sound good, but I've been doing it for years, and I just speak life to it. I yeah. speak life to you in the name of Jesus. I speak we do life. do to our finances. I definitely do that to the finances. And, um, and there'll be times where we'll go, man, things feel really tight. Why do they feel so tight? Mm -hmm. And both of us will realize, 
oh man, I don't think we've said anything. I, th right. I think for whatever, we've right. been busy, we've been caught up, life's been crazy. And so we do, then we just take a few, I don't know, we days, take weeks, money, months. We take we, money, sow it, and we confess it. Yeah, and we just start speaking to it. And God has never, ever let us down. The, the thing is, is, is as the rain falls, yeah. as the snow mm -hmm. falls and water it, brings a wealthy place to the earth to bring forth and yeah. produce, so shall my word be. Yeah. So, so. It cannot so, return to him void. That no, scripture has so, in it. So, so the seed, a lot of times we'll take a seed yeah. and we, we plant that in somebody's so, ministry. So, so this is a good time. For people to sow a seed while we're talking about it, I didn't set this up like this. It just, <laughs> no. it just, it just happened. But, but it's a, it a seed time. This is what we do. Sure. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask you to do anything we're not willing to do. We, this is a lifestyle of us doing it. But we always will take. A lot of times, we, we're in a thousand dollar. We sow thousands of dollars. We sow a thousand dollar seed almost every time that we mm -hmm. do that, and we sow it. And then now I have the, I have the responsibility to release rain. Rain. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look up the word rain drop in, in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew drop, it, it, it's actually the word prophecy. Yeah. Drop. It's a prophecy. So, so, so when you rain, when, when you release the rain, what, what good, if you didn't put a seed in, you don't care if it rains or not, but if you got seed in the ground, yeah. you have a responsibility to speak the word of God to because that's the rain and the snow that waters the the the, the earth that yeah. brings forth that seed and sometimes into its fruition that harvest comes back quick sometimes it's in days sometimes it's in weeks sometimes lately it's, it's been in weeks and sometimes it's in the season of years I mean Absolutely. So, so what you have to do is stay faithful to it and you yeah. stay faithful to tending uh, you when you plant an olive tree, when you plant any kind of fruit tree, they don't bear fruit in mm -hmm. the first year, but you tend it, you tend it, you tend it. And by the time an olive tree bears fruit, it'll go for over 2,000 years bearing fruit if it's kept healthy, but it might take a few years to get there. Yeah. So some of the seeds you plant comes back quickly. There's it, olive it trees comes, in Israel yeah. that still, that were there, that, that have been there since Jesus is Sure. Born. That's crazy to me. That's awesome. Yeah, and so so here's the beauty of it. Some things you do come back to you quickly. Some things are are take longer, yeah. but it's not about it being the time frame that what it's what matters. It's that God is right. wanting to do a lasting thing, yeah. a lasting residual in your life, yeah. a lasting payback. And yeah. so you can't just get frustrated because you sowed and two days later you don't have your breakthrough. You have to keep on doing, you have keep to on walking, it. You keep have to water on it. keep on on living this thing out keep yeah. on speaking to it and I promise you that thing cannot help but come back to you in the right yeah. time in the right season and that's what that that verse says in Isaiah it says his word cannot return Turn to void. him void and so it, it has to accomplish that which he sent it to do and there is no there is no boomerang effect there is it just can't come back because it comes back in the sense mm -hmm. of without fulfilling the purpose it has so that's something when you get a prophetic word fight mm -hmm. with that prophetic Absolutely. word when you get a rhema word when god drops something in your heart fight with it because those things can't come they can't return back to god void mm -hmm. that means if they've been spoken into your life they have to produce some fruit no absolutely i mean it, you have to water it. Yeah. You have to water the seed. You have to do it. Um, I I think this would be a great time for us. Sure. Honestly, to receive our tithes and offerings. Let's do I it. mean, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I have been just. I've been wanting just to run around the church <laughs> right now, just because I get so excited about this. But this is this is what we do, Mary. Yeah. This you is and how I we do live. this. You know, we say, Lord, you're, you said with long life you will satisfy us. Yeah. That I, I'm, I, I, I'm out of debt. My needs are met. I got plenty more to put in store so I can be a blessing. Yes. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only, never beneath. Yep, I I'm a favor. lender, not a borrower. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, you constantly are speaking the reality of God's promises and constantly. You, you might say, well, how long do you do it? As, and I say it until 
It manifests. Until you, until you I don't see stop your until it's manifest. And then for every harvest you get, there's another seed to be sown. Yeah. No, no farmer gets a harvest and then just quits no. farming. Far, if farming yeah. is what you do for a lifetime, then yeah. out of every harvest, there has to still be a seed yeah. that you put back into the ground. You, you have to be like that widow that came before the, the judge sure. and just battered and black and blue until she got what she wanted. Yeah. And it was because of her persistence. He says, I got to give her what she wants because of her just just of her persistence alone. She's not going to leave we me alone. We don't even know her name. We, so she's insignificant in the fact that her name wasn't famous. Yep. Her story yep. isn't famous as far as her backstory right. or what happened after that. But that right. one little moment in time, her Absol persistence made Powerful. her significant. Powerful. And so anyway, there are there are links there for those of you that are members of Cornerstone Church. Um, yeah. There's a link there for our tithes and our offerings. We just want to say thank you for participating in it yes. and doing that. And if you're if you're new and you want to give, we give you an opportunity to do that. Please um, do that. Um, if you're watching from um, uh, other parts of the world, please let us know where you're watching. You're more than uh, you're you're more than welcome to give. In whatever monetary participate realms, with participate us. with us. If this word has been encouraging, if this series has been encouraging, and this series has been great, um, you know, share. Please share this if you can. Share this if you're if you're a Cornerstone Church member. I need you to share this. I need you to comment, yeah. and I need you to like. It's not. Give I, us I'm some just hearts. give us some give hearts. Us right now just give us some hearts let right now let us know you like it let us know that you're part of it but please comment i need you to comment the reason why we comment certain things is because uh facebook will put it out even to more uh places and so it, it just benefits the word sure. of god going out so if i can, if you can help me cornerstone church to share it and to comment and to like it i'm telling you that this thing, I mean, you, you've seen us, we're all over the world now, we're all over the world, and this little place called Pasco, Washington, here at Cornerstone Church, I'm telling you that we're going all over the world, affecting lives, um, uh, so that we can advance the kingdom of God um, everywhere we go, amen? Absolutely. So anyway, Meredith, one last thing, I want to, I know we're coming out to the end, but, but how you know mm -hmm. you're in the promised land that overflows with milk and honey, <laughs> Is yes. that milk comes from cows, mm -hmm. honey comes from bees. Yep. That in the promised land, how you know, every now and then you stepped in, you step in cow poop. I said it. <laughs> You'll step in cow manure. And so if you've ever stepped in cow manure, I'm not talking about just literal cow manure, but if you've had some cruddy situation, if you had some cruddy things, I'm telling you, you're in the promised land. If you've ever been stung by a bee, I have. I can tell you stories. I've been stung by a bee. Meredith has been stung by a bee. My whole family's been by, stung by a bee. Pamela Kinsey's whole family has been stung by bees. By but I'm the telling same you, swarm. absolutely. But I'm telling you <laughs> that if you've been stung by a bee, you can get upset, and every once in a while, it's a little painful and a little cruddy. But how you know you're in the promised land is there would never be any stingers if there was no bees, and if there's bees, there's honey. I'm telling you, God has always placed us in a promised land, flowing, overflowing with milk and honey. Yes. And every now and then, Meredith, we step in some cruddy things, but God brings deliverance yes, because we're in the promised place. We're in a wealthy place. Yeah, every once in a while we get stung by a bee, but guess what? We're in a wealthy place. I can thank God. I can throw one hand up saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing us yeah. from a place of bondage, through the wilderness and allowing us to come to a land of promise where we, whatsoever things we say, whatsoever things we declare, whatsoever things we decree, whatsoever things we begin to prophesy will manifest yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, we love you. We just want to extend our prayers, our hearts with you for those mm -hmm. of you that have been frustrated, gone through stuff in this yeah. last season. Don't shut your mouth. Don't complain and murmur but start to speak the promises of God over your situations, over your businesses, over your lives, over your families. We love you. Absolutely. We miss you. We can't wait till we can gather again. But until then, we keep pushing. We keep walking. We keep standing. We keep fighting the good fight of faith. And we are going to see such a 
incredible victory on our behalf. And so we love you. We can't wait to see you. We'll be back on Sunday, and then we'll see you again on Wednesday. And we've got all sorts of other stuff planned in between. So stay tuned. Keep watching. Text loop to 509-309-0993, and we'll keep you in the loop of things. But until then, go hug your family. Go love on somebody, and we will see you We'll see you soon. Sunday. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. We hope this message was encouraging to you. Before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube and Facebook pages. If you have a prayer request, click on the link in the description. Thanks and God bless.